Masechet Nedarim, Dafnun Gimel, and this will complete the sixth pedic of the Masechet. We have three more Mishnayot, all about, again, food and food definitions regarding vows. Hanoded mina temarim, someone makes a vow, I'm not going to eat dates. Mutar bidvash temarim, he is still permitted to have date honey. Because it's processed, it becomes a new item <clears throat> that you don't call that dates anymore. Now it's called honey. Mi me sit vaniyot, mutar bechometz sit vaniyot. If someone says, I'm not going to eat these unripe grapes. Uh, these are grapes out of season. They're probably not going to become ripe. Um, so they're really um, uh, not edible, very sour. The only thing that you can do useful with them is make vinegar. This is not the typical way of making vinegar. Usually vinegar is made from regular grapes that you turn into grape juice and then <clears throat> you wait till it goes sour, and that becomes vinegar. But uh, these are these unripe grapes and uh, not used for eating. So if you say, I'm not going to eat these unripe grapes, which you probably aren't going to eat anyway, uh, nevertheless, you are allowed to have the vinegar that's made from the grape. So once again, it's a product of it, but it becomes a new item once it goes through that processing. That is Tanakama. Is machmir, and he says that anything where the derivative, the product that you make from the original, has the same name as the original, and you make a, a vow against it, it is still prohibited. And so that would apply to devash, we're going to see later <clears throat> that when you say devash, standard, that means honey, means bee honey. So here, this type of honey is not bee honey, it's devash temarim. So you see, see, you still call it by devash temarim, even though you're adding a modifier, and even though you processed it, and now there's something that comes from the original food, nevertheless, since the name that it comes, of, of the item that comes from, <clears throat> is still attached to it, it's still prohibited. When I say temarim, I mean anything that I call by association with temarim. And the same thing, chometz is not standard vinegar. If I just say vinegar, that means vinegar that comes from grape juice or wine. And this, that comes from the unripe grapes, is called chometz sitvaniyot. It has an extra name that alludes to where it came from. And therefore, it is still, all, even these derivative products are prohibited. And then we say, Chachamim matirim, Chachamim disagree with Rabbi Yudah ben Betera, and they are lenient, and they permit. Now, a simple reading of the Mishnah would seem that Tanakama is the same as Chachamim. Tanakama gave a general rule, maybe that is also Chachamim. Rabbi Yudah disagrees and explains why, and so now we just end up by saying Chachamim uh, permit. Uh, even though it was is repetitive. But the Gemara doesn't take it that way. They ask, Chachamim, Hainu Tanakama, why would you be repetitive? And what Tanakama seems to be the same, say the same thing as Chachamim. But it assumes that they are, in fact, different authors. This is one Tana, whoever it is, um, it says that they, these two cases are permitted. Chachamim also say Matirim, but there should be a difference between them. After all, <coughs> they are mentioned separately. So our answer is as follows. We are going to identify Chachamim as being not everybody, but rather Chachamim are the, is the opinion of Rabbi Shimon ben El Azar, who is in between. He's going to split the difference. Uh, we're going to end up saying that Tanakama permits both cases. Rabbi Yudah ben Betera prohibits both cases. And Chachamim are going to uh, prohibit the uh, case of dates, but agree with the Tanakama regarding the vinegar. Uh, so here's how it works. If you have an item where you eat the item unprocessed and you also eat it processed, um, so you eat it and what it comes from it also you eat, for example, dates and date honey. Dates are delicious by raw and date honey is also delicious raw. In that case, no matter what language you use, both will be prohibited. If I say I'm not going to eat dates, so dates is going to include date honey, right? You use the same word, 
and uh, both are perfectly edible, so you're going to have in mind both. Or even if you say, I'm not going to have date honey, well, date honey is from dates, so then you're not going to be able to have dates either. However, something that itself is not edible, like these unripe grapes, you can't eat them, even though what comes from them, the vinegar that you make from it, is edible. In that case, no and a sword ela biosemi menu. This is very interesting. When I say I'm not going to eat unripe grapes, that by itself, if I take it literally, is meaningless. Nobody would eat unripe grapes. Therefore, if I make a vow I'm not going to eat unripe grapes, I'm actually allowed to eat the unripe grapes themselves. I'm only prohibited from having the vinegar, because that's what a person means when he says, I'm not going to eat unripe grapes. He has in mind, if I process it and make vinegar, which normally one would eat, that was, that's what I'm making prohibited. So only the vinegar is prohibited, whereas, because uh, all he has in mind is the product of it, whereas the grape itself, he obviously does not have in mind because he wouldn't eat it anyway. And therefore, this opinion in, that's only recorded in the, in the Braita of the Bishimon ben El Azar, that we are attributing to Chachamim, they are stringent and agree with Rabbi Yudah ben Betera when it comes to the dates, that if you say dates, then the date honey is also prohibited. However, they actually disagree with everyone regarding the unripe grapes, because if I say I'm not going to eat unripe grapes, then the unripe grapes themselves are permitted, and, and it's the only the vinegar that is prohibited. So in that sense, regarding the unripe grapes themselves, uh, they would be permissive. And that brings us to the next Mishnah. Hanoder min hayayin, mutar biyen tapuchin. If I say I'm not going to have wine, I'm still allowed to have apple wine. We call it apple cider, uh, but it could be fermented. And so, um, but when we, people say wine, they always mean grape wine. And uh, therefore, it's permitted. Uh, they don't mean, they're not having in mind apple cider. So the apple wine is permitted. Min shemen, mutar b'shemen shum shemin. Someone says I'm not going to have oil, standard oil is olive oil. That's what people use. And so uh, it would be permitted for the person to have sesame oil. We're going to see in the Gemara, well, it depends on where you are and what is a typical oil to use. If I just say I'm not going to have honey, that means bee honey. That's what people usually mean by honey, and therefore you still would be allowed to have date honey. And again, this might change from uh, in time and place. If someone says, I'm not going to have vinegar, then that means wine vinegar. That's, where, that's how most vinegar is made. And therefore, that, they will be permitted to have vinegar from the unripe grapes, because that's not the usual way. That's not standard, just plain vinegar. Someone says, I'm not going to have leeks. He's permitted to eat this kaflutot. It's a type of leek, um, but standard leeks are a different type. If someone says, I'm not going to eat vegetables, then what he means is vegetables that a person grows in his garden. But vegetables that grow in the wild, out in the field, that is permitted because nobody refers to the vegetables that grow in the wild out in the field as just plain vegetables. You always need a modifier to say, oh, those are field vegetables. And so if I just say standard vegetables, I mean those that I grow on purpose in my garden. And I do not think about field vegetables that I would always add a modifier if I was referring to those. All right, so also it really depends on the language. Now, Baraita is going to talk about this oil. This Mishnah really only applied to the context of Eretz Yisrael. It's there that if you say oil, standard oil, in Israel refers to olive oil. And so he would be prohibited to have olive oil, but permitted to have sesame oil, because that's not the standard oil that's used in Israel. Whereas in Bavel, it's actually the opposite. In Bavel, the olives don't grow so much, so their standard oil is sesame oil. And so they would only be prohibited in sesame oil, but they would be permitted to have olive oil. This, by the way, is a good proof that the Mishnah was composed in 
ארץ ישראל. מקום שמסתפקים זה מזה, אסור בזה ובזה. If you're in a place where people use both oils, they use olive oil and sesame oil, and person just says, I vow I'm not going to have oil, then they will be prohibited from ha having both types of oil. That's what the Braita says. Now the Gamera is going to ask, Pishita, isn't that obvious? Whatever you use, got it, right? If you use both, isn't that obvious that both would be prohibited? No, the Mishbaraita needs to tell us this law for a place where people use mostly one type and only a little bit of the other type. I might think that I should follow the majority. Since most people here use sesame oil and uh, olive oil is more rare, so then it should refer only to sesame oil. That's what I might think. And therefore, this Baraita comes to teach us that when we have a doubt regarding astringency, and this is true regarding vows, that when a person says a vow, um, even if it has a secondary meaning or more rare meaning, but it's enough that people, when you say oil, if I say, you know, can I have some oil, and you'd bring me the more rare type of oil, and that would be acceptable, uh, then, uh, so we have to assume, uh, it's hard to know what people have in mind, right? Did they have in mind only the majority oil? But maybe they had in mind also the minority oil that people use. And since it's possible that they had that in mind, we have to be, be astringent, uh, for that assumption, and that's why even the minority used oil is also going to be prohibited. Now, our Mishnah that says, if I say I'm not going to have vegetables, that only means garden vegetables that I grow on purpose. That is only true, that law is only true in the other, in the six, in six out of seven years of the Shemitah cycle. Because in six out of seven years, if I say vegetables, I'm going to my garden to get vegetables. Vegetables that grow out in the wild, in the field, those are not used and um, are not considered what you'd call standard vegetables. To refer to those, I would have to say, oh, that's a field vegetable. So that's why in those six years, you're pro prohibited only from the garden vegetables, but permitted from the field vegetables. However, it switches during the Shavuot year, because in that year, I'm not allowed to plant in my garden. And so anything in the garden is prohibited. I'm only allowed to have that which grows by itself, that grows in the wild. Even during Shavuot year, I can't plant or cultivate anything. But if it grows in the wild, then it's free for everyone to take and is permitted. So if during the Shavuot year I say, I'm not going to have any vegetables, what do I have in mind? I have in mind vegetables that are available. Well, what's available in the Shavuot year? Only the field vegetables. So therefore, in Shavuot, the standard vegetables are field vegetables. So we see here, it doesn't only depend on the place, Bavel or Eretz Yisrael. It also depends on the timing. And the timing itself will change what a word, uh, what people you think about when they refer to a word. He says this distinction between the sixth years and the seventh year, that is only in a place where they do not import vegetables from outside the land of Israel. Since they don't import what vegetables are available in Israel, during the Shavuot year, only the field vegetables. So standard vegetables, in that case, means field vegetables and are prohibited. But there are some places where, in order to get vegetables during the Shavuot year, they will import them from outside the land of Israel. Um, and so since they're importing them, standard uh, vegetables are the imported ones that are from gardens. Um, outside the land of Israel. And so therefore, in that, even in the Shavuot year, people are not, do not primarily have in mind field vegetables, and therefore only the ones that they bring from outside the land of Israel, from gardens, that would be, prohibit, pro, that would be prohibited by the vow, but field vegetables would not be covered under the vow. Now these two opinions, these two interpretations here, we saw uh, between the Rabbi Abhu and the first here anonymous answer. Uh, what would be? Uh, what, why are they? Why do they have different interpretations of this baraita? Uh, so it follows these two tanaim, which says and mivin yarak min chutzah la aretz la aretz. The Tanakhama of this Baraita says one is not permitted to import 
uh, fr uh, vegetables from outside the land of Israel to Israel. And so that would be the anonymous explanation here that, yes, there's a difference between the um, uh, the rest of the sixth year, the, the seventh year, and the rest of the six years, um, because in the seventh year, all you have is the field vegetables, and so that's why field vegetables are standard vegetables. And he does he assumes no one's bringing it in from outside because it's not allowed. Whereas Rabbi Chananya ben Gavriel Gamliel Omer, maybe in Yadak Mechutsa La'aretz La'aretz, he thinks you are allowed to import vegetables, and therefore Rabbi Abu's answer that says, well, if you import vegetables, then you still mean garden vegetables. So he thinks that it's permitted. Okay, now this Braita itself, what is the reason? Why can't you import vegetables? What's wrong with importing? It's because when you import the vegetables, you're not, they're not, might not be sending only the vegetable by itself, but they might send it with a clod of earth attached to it. So what? So what's wrong with that? Well, there is another halacha that the land of outside the land of Israel is tame. Um, why is um, anywhere out the? Why why is all land outside the and land of Israel tame? So it could be a couple of reasons. One, maybe they're not careful with where they bury their dead, and they um, will will bury even in unmarked graves. And then when you import this, there might be a little bone from some Jewish person who was not buried properly, and so it might actually be regular tame. Another possibility, which seems more likely, uh, is that this is a gezerah to discourage people from leaving Eretz Israel to the other lands. And it's associated more, not with technical ritual impurity, but more with a moral, spiritual, low level of the lands outside, the land, outside of Israel because of the pagan behavior. And so... Um, to downgrade the other lands compared to Eretz Israel, it's treated as um, as uh, impure. Anyway, the point is that um, this would be prohibited to bring into the land of Israel because uh, this is Tameh and you can't bring it into the Tahor land of Israel. And that would be the reason why it would be prohibited to import vegetables according to the Tanakhama. And uh, finally, Mishnah. Min hakerub asur ba'is pargus. If someone makes a vow, I'm not going to eat cabbage. He is prohibited from eating this asparagus. Now, asparagus here um, must not mean what we call asparagus. Asparagus seems to come from a word that means chopped up. So something that's, that's eaten chopped up and... Um, I guess asparagus is kind of hard to eat when it's whole, as anyone who's eaten asparagus knows. Um, so anyway, here it means uh, some, some uh, uh, type of a cabbage. And so if you say no cabbage, you're also including this type of asparagus. Maybe it means like uh, something like kale or something like that. I mean, asparagus, mutar bekeru. But if I say I'm not going to, if he only says I'm not going to have asparagus, well, then he's permitted to have cabbage because espargus is a very is just one small type of cabbage and so the small subtype is not going to uh, include and prohibit all other cabbages min hagirisin asur ba someone says i'm not going to have pounded beans uh, one is permitted from having a stew that is usually made from pounded beans um, because is prohibited because the pounded beans are you use them to make the stew. So if I can't have the pounded beans, I also can't have them in the stew, according to Tanakama. But Rabbi Yosef says it's permitted. I'm putting it in the stew, but the stew itself, sometimes you make it from pound, pounded beans, sometimes you make it from other things. I was just thinking was, was thinking of the stew, but not the raw the, the, the raw beans would be permitted. Uh, the stew is made in many different ways, so these are two separate things. If I say I'm not going to have the stew, then one is permitted to have the raw pounded beans, because there, surely, I meant only the stew is prohibited, but the ingredients that went into the stew, I didn't have that in mind. However, if I do say that I'm not going to have the stew, I'm prohibited from having the garlic it seems that the garlic was the essential ingredient of the stew. It just basically tasted like garlic. And so 
if you're not, if you can say, I'm not going to have the stew, it's almost synonymous with the garlic. But the Biosa Matir, but the Biosa says, no, not necessarily. Um, you know, it's not always the same thing. And uh, so garlic is a separate item. It's just one of the ingredients. And therefore, even if I said I'm not going to have stew, I'm still allowed to have the garlic. Min hashum mutar bamikpah. On the other hand, if I say I'm not going to have garlic, I'm permitted to eat the stew, and because the shum is just the raw ingredient, but putting it into the stew um, either changes form, changes name, and that's a different item and is permitted. Min hadashim asur baashishim. We saw this part of the baraita, this in the Mishnah already. If I say I'm not going to have lentils then I'm also not allowed to have ashishim, which is a dish made out of lentils. It's the same thing, kind of looks the same. Everybody knows this is just lentils that's cooked, that are cooked. Rabbi Yosei, once again, he says it's permitted. No, it's a different form. Now it's cooked, now it's processed, has a different name, and therefore it's a different thing, and people do not have that in mind. But everybody would agree that if I say I'm not going to have this lentil dish that's called ashishim, I just mean the dish as as is prepared. But the raw ingredients I don't have in mind, so it was permitted be permitted to have lentils themselves. Chita chitin shani toem. Someone says chita in singular or chitin. It's not clear once again if he says is these two options. He says chita shani toem or chitin shani toem, or if he says the whole thing chita chitin shani toem. Right from 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 one wheat to many wheats. I'm not gonna have any of them. Let's say it says it all together. I'm not going to taste any of them. Asur bahen ben kemach ben apat, and he's prohibited both from the flour, meaning the raw wheat, and from the baked wheat that's baked into, uh, uh, into bread. So uh, it's permit, uh, all, both of them are pro- prohibited. Geris gerisin shani toem. If he says uh, a pounded bean, singular, uh, and pounded beans that I'm not, I will not, uh, I will not taste. Asur bahen ben hayin ben mebushalin. Then he prohibits himself once again, all, both raw and cooked. And so somehow, because he's saying the singular and the plural, that's going to cover the 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 raw and the cooked. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Konam Giris O Chita Shani Toem Mutal Lachos Chaim. Rabbi Yehuda, however, says that uh, when someone makes a prohibition that he's not going to have a bean or a wheat, I will not taste. He, he, that means he can't taste it in terms of eating, but. If he just wants to chew it raw, like uh, sometimes people will do for medicinal purposes, they chew on uh, on wheat and use that for a bandage. Um, that's permitted because only chewing to eat is prohibited, but chewing just to chew is permitted. Okay, Tanya, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel Omer, Chita sheani toem asur lefot umutar lachos. If someone says wheat meaning a singular, a wheat grain uh, that I will not taste, then he is prohibited from having, this doesn't mean that he's prohibited from baking, we're not talking about the actual um, a process of baking, but rather eating baked bread, he's, he's, he cannot have baked bread, but he's permitted to chew on raw grains. So in other words, the word chita in singular refers to the processed um, the processed baked wheat, but not the raw wheat, which then he can chew. Chitim shani toem asur lachos mutalefot. Chitim in the plural is the opposite. Then he can he can chew on. He's prohibited from chewing on the on raw wheat, but he's permitted to uh, permitted to eat the baked ba- baked items. Uh, if he says both the singular and the plural, then that will prohibit both chewing it raw and eating the cooked bread. Okay, why? Well, this seems to be just a matter of language, kind of like in English. If you say um, wheat grains, I will, I will not eat wheat grains. Well, that sounds like, if you're saying in plural, it sounds like actual grains of wheat. Where if you say, I will not eat wheat grain, 
then you're probably referring to bread made out of wheat grain as opposed to uh, barley grain or rye grain. Uh, you're referring to the category and the way you usually eat the category is with bread. And so that would be the same idea uh, in Hebrew that the uh, chita by itself, you're referring to the category as bread, whereas chitim is referring to many actual grains that are in their raw state. Um, and that's why it seems that the uh, Mishnah, if the Mishnah in fact is agreeing with Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, is again referring to where he says both, chita chitin, shani toim, and that's why he's prohibited from the raw and the cooked. Geris she'ani toim, he says singular, I'm not going to have a pounded grain, a pounded bean, asur levashel umutar lachos, there also he's prohibited from the cooked bean, but he will be permitted from chewing the raw bean. Gerisin shani toem, if he only says the plural, gerisin, asur lachos umutar levashel, then that's referring to beans, the raw beans, as what is prohibited, but the cooked beans are permitted. Um, it's all just based on language usage. If he says, Giris, Girisin, Shani Toem, Asur, Ben, Levashel, Ben, Nachos, Ben, Nachos, if he says the singular and the plural, then he means to prohibit upon himself both the cooked and the raw beans. Hadran, Alach, Anoder, Min, HaMevushal.